that at these press conferences and to have the opportunity to listen to the players get up here and talk. And I can't help but think, you know, for, for Matt Shepard to stand up here. And one year ago, he was the young guy in the group, you know, the one guy that was going to have returning experience. And now he is the sole guy with returning experience and how his roles have changed in the last year. Um, two outstanding young men, both are playing really well for us and doing a nice job as seniors uh, helping to lead this team. Which kind of going backwards here uh, a little bit, I'll, I'll look first at the open date. What we tried to get done in this open date, alluded to it was going to be a little bit different than it was at the beginning, uh, I'll say three weeks ago when we were in an open date after six games. This one was really, we were trying to, we were trying to get healthy. Uh, the, the FIU game was a very physical game for us. It's been a long nine weeks to get to this open date. We've got a lot of guys with bumps and bruises and a lot of guys that have been playing through uh, with some pain. And so we feel like this week was really important to be able to get healthy. I think we needed to continue to develop the depth with some of the injuries that we've had. Some guys have really had to step up, especially on special teams. And we've got to prepare not just for the Southern Miss game, but for the last four games of the season as we go down this final stretch. And we wanted to continue to get plenty of work where we were going to improve. Did a lot more uh, individual work this time than we did on the last one. The last one was an awful lot of team. We still got some team and got everybody some reps, as I talk all the time about the difference between rest and rust. I mean, you just got to make sure that you don't get too much rust on it. You got to continue to improve. But I think it's been a, well, we got to improve fundamentally and we got to improve statistically as well. When you look at what we've, as coaches, we've tried to look at it on where do we need to get better? Do we need to get better at what we're doing or how we are doing it? And that's kind of one of the things that we have looked at this week uh, with ourselves. Going back before that, the FIU game was a very physical game as I recap that. And just to be able to win the game on the road, coming off a loss here at home against North Texas, really proud of the energy that these seniors brought forth. We addressed that and talked a little bit about it after the North Texas game, and I thought they really did a nice job. The seniors did it leading this football team uh, down there in Florida. I thought FIU played an excellent football game. They came in, they played hard, uh, and it was, a, it was a great challenge for us. It was a 12-7 game late in the game, and to see them be able to see the players be able to take it over and make some of the plays that they did to make a difference uh, was huge. Uh, I think you can't talk about that game without talking about the defense and the way the defense played. Probably the most complete game we've played all year. Uh, I thought guys in the secondary, the linebackers, uh, seeing Bo Feet step up and get all his experience along with a couple of the starters. The D-line, I heard you ask about Pichon. It was great to see him come up and play the way that he did because I think he is a very talented individual. But on the offensive side of the ball, it was about the offensive line and Kenneth Dixon. Uh, really, I thought those guys did a great job. We've made some moves on our offensive line recently, trying to get that right combination to put the best five forward. And I thought those guys really did a nice job up front. And I thought Kenneth Dixon uh, just really d does a great job. You know, when you look at it, he's got some great runs, but it's, I don't know, for me, I've never watched him play and said, wow, how many yards does he have now? I mean, he's just one of those guys that he works so hard for every yard he gets that at the end of the day, you look at it and go, wow, he had 130 yards today? Uh, because they're not in huge chunks of yardage, but he's just an absolute workhorse. And then, again, special teams, Kyle Fisher. The good and the bad of it, uh, Kyle Fisher steps in. He goes five for five on field goals, gets a lot of national attention for the things that he accomplished, which was great to see. The negative of it was that we had to kick five field goals. Uh, so as a coach, there's always a bright spot and a low spot and everything that you do. And so uh, we've got to do a better job offensively in the red zone, but it was certainly nice to see Kyle step in and to take the role that he was given on that, on that day and for, form to execute so well. Uh, getting into this game, um, right now, I mean, as you get into it, it's the rivalry in Dixie. I know I, I heard Patrick stand up here and talk a little bit about it in the history since 1935 in the 31-13 to series. Now 40% of the games have been decided by one score or less, and you start to look. Uh, this is what you talk about when you talk about getting into conference play. 
when you get into some of these geographical rivalries, when you have the opportunity to start to go against somebody every year. And I think this is a natural rivalry, not only with the history since 1935, but the, with the geographical location and being in the same league, I think is only going to add more and more to this, to this rivalry game. Uh, I know Coach Munkin at Southern Miss, he, <clears throat> He GA'd for a great coach in South Bend uh, that I've had the opportunity to spend a little bit of time with. I've known Coach Munkin for a long time. Uh, he's an excellent football coach. He's a, he's a good person. And he's, I know right now as he's walked into a situation very similar to myself, and you're trying to get in there as a first-year head coach and trying to put all the pieces together, and I know that uh, that football team is getting better and better as I watch them. You know, what's going to add an interesting twist to this series or this rivalry right now are the number of coaches on that staff that have a tie to Louisiana Tech, whether they played here or whether they coached here, and most recently uh, even with some coaches that were on the staff a year ago. And so when you look at it, the upper hand will definitely be given to Southern Miss with their knowledge of personnel uh, because not only did they uh, have the opportunity to see them every day, but they had an opportunity to practice with them every single day. And so um, it's going to create a little bit more excitement, a little bit more energy into this rivalry, but I think it's got an opportunity for all the makings to be a great series, and I'm, I'm really fortunate to be part of it and looking forward to getting into this game this weekend. But uh, right now what we've got to do is make sure that we just stay focused on uh, what we have to do. We continue to talk about a faceless opponent, even though it's almost impossible this week with it being Southern Miss. We've got to worry about us. We've got to worry about making the improvements, making the strides, getting to where we want to be for this last four-game stretch. What does a, um, a rivalry game like this do for your program in terms of having someone every year, year in, year out, that's not just a conference foe, but is a team that you wouldn't mind playing even if they weren't in your conference? Well, and the thing, we talked about this during the offseason. We've, we've now, we're going into game number nine and we have not watched us play a last year's opponent yet. We have had uh, eight opponents, and we have not played a team that we played a year ago. One of the advantages to a rivalry game is every year you have a chance to go back and get a great evaluation on where your personnel matches up with your opponent's personnel, even though it may be a little bit different schemes with a new staff in here. But I think I'm looking forward to that being in the conference and that regular year in and year out rivalry games that not only we have naturally with a Southern Miss right down the road, but some of the games that are going to continue to form more and more with North Texas and San Antonio and Rice and some of the other teams in the league. And so uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's huge. I think it's great for our fan base. I think it's great for college football. And I think it's, it's got this game has so many implications into it not just with it being bordering states against each other, but when you start talking about recruiting, we recruit a lot of the very, very same athletes, uh, but there's a lot more implica implications that last for a year more than just who won and lost on that given day. Coach, Southern Miss has been on the wrong end of a lot of blowouts this season. Mm -hmm. What can you guys take away from that film? Do you, do you look at what those teams did that was successful or – do you throw it out because of how, how lopsided the game was? Well, I, I don't know so much it was a lopsided, but you look at a guy like Cato playing quarterback at Marshall and the success that he's had and where he's been, and Tony Peterson knows having the opportunity to coach a guy like that. With his experience there, we don't have that guy under the center. We don't have the, that guy that's making a lot of those throws and doing a lot of those things. And so uh, very difficult for you to compare and say, well, they won, so we should. Uh, that's why you line up and play the game each and every week. In a rivalry game, what do they say? You can throw the records out the window. It uh, doesn't matter. And I, I look at the – the way that they've grown through this whole process. I look at a young quarterback that throws for over 200 yards in his first start and then throws for over 300 in his second start. We have the opportunity to be the third. Uh, who knows where that's going? I think they're very talented. They've gone to a lot of younger players. They're playing a lot of younger players, but they still have a lot of talent on that football team. I've really been impressed with the, with the young quarterback, the young wide receivers. I know they're playing a lot of uh, young people up front on the offensive line. Cameron Tom was a young man that uh, during the recruiting battles, I mean, and, and him going there, I, so 
I had an opportunity to watch a lot of him in high school. I know they have talent. I look at them on defense. I watch Thornton. I don't know that there's a better defense alignment in this league than Thornton. Uh, I have an opportunity to visit with one of the pro scouts, and he was talking about what a great player he is. And you don't need to tell me. Uh, I've been watching the film. I mean, so they have talent on that football team. Uh, they just, they're young and they're inexperienced, and they've been in some games, you know, when you look at the final scores, they may be lopsided on one end, but at the other, same time when you watch them uh, earlier in the year, you watch them in Arkansas, they're in a dogfight at Arkansas. They got down in that game against uh, Marshall early in the game with a couple turnovers and miscues, but from, you know, in the second quarter, they win 10 nothing. You know, you look at it, uh, they do some good things, and it's a very good, it's a very talented football team. And so it'll be a challenge. I don't think you can look past any of it. When you look at a team like them that, that hasn't won since 2011, mm -hmm. is it, you talk about momentum in a football game. Is there momentum in seasons where you get on a losing streak and it's kind of, kind of hard to get the train back on the track? Well, it is, but it's also sometimes it's even easier to be that focused coming off a loss rather than coming off a win. You know, we always talk about that humble and hungry. I mean, there's no doubt that they're hungry, but uh, when you're a team sitting here with three wins, it's not exactly like we can look past anybody at this point. Um, you know, we're sitting here fighting to kind of salvage this season with what we're doing and some of the miscues that we talked about early that we addressed during the open date. So I don't think you can look past any of that. I just think you have to look at uh, our football team and get better. So uh, I know they've gone through some ups and some downs. They've been close. But they're competitive and they're finding their way. And I know they have a good football staff and they're going to come in here and they're going to play their tails off uh, out there on that stadium on Saturday. Given the, the red zone woes you discussed that you wanted to address, what are some of the changes and adjustments you, you've gone through to try to, to, to remedy that in terms of maybe play calling or anything else you wanted to change as a, from a coaching perspective to say, okay, this didn't work, so now we're going to try this? Well, we told them not to turn it over anymore, so we should be good. <laughs> uh, um, you know, turnovers has been a big part of it. And we talked about that from the first game of the year at NC State, which when you look at the, uh, the magnitude of that, that fumble and how bad it hurt, but it seems like that has continued to repeat itself at Kansas and along the way. And being in this game, I mean, and not being able to throw the ball with the efficient we needed to be, we got down on the one-yard line and you hand the ball to uh, Kenneth Dixon, who the ball squirts out, you lose 10. Quarterback tries to pick it up and outrun everybody, which wasn't a very smart decision uh, there. And then you come back on the second one and you fumble or read, you know, a handoff. Things that you've executed uh, hundreds of times in practice flawlessly and we get down there and I don't know if – uh, the apple gets in our throat when we get that close, you know, with it all. But I think we've just got to continue to talk about and harp on executing and trying to put our players in that, f that part of the field as much as we can in practice to try and get them more comfortable with it. But it definitely has to improve. I remember you saying during the first bye week or going into the first bye week that you wish that Brian was, like, healthier so you could spend more time with him with him being a young quarterback. Yes. With this second bye week, since, since he was a little bit more healthy, were you able to work more with him and make some more progress? Yeah, you know, really, he's he's one of those guys that's been in this boat of getting healthy. I mean, when you look at it and he's gone through, he's banged up in his shoulder and his knee and his ankle. And, I mean, he's just had a lot of bumps and bruises and taken some shots. And we're trying to – get him a little bit healthier as well. So he really took very few reps last week. I think it's more important to have, uh, to try and give him a chance to get healthy than it is to run him around out there in practice. And that was part of the mindset and what we were trying to do. But, you know, you got a guy like that, a guy like Dora, a um, couple of guys that we've been trying to get healthy this week. But then you also, it's been nice, it was nice to see Tevin King running around out there again. Uh, yesterday and Vernon Butler out there running around last night and there would definitely be a nice welcome back and it would be a definite shot in the arm and a boost uh, for us if we could get some of those guys fully healthy. So did not get the opportunity to take all the reps with Ryan that you talk about in this open date that we would have liked to. What is Kevin's status? Right now, um, I'm encouraged. Right now, I think he's probable. Watching, you know, we're in shorts out there yesterday, but watching him running around out there, I was I was impressed with the way he's moving around. I feel like right now, knowing that we still have a week to go, I feel very confident that he'll play. Coach, yeah. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. At this point, I don't know. Um, probably a little bit more doubtful, questionable at this point, but I really don't know at this point. 
Uh, there's a couple of those guys that, you know, like I said, I have not seen them do much this last week because we tried to just take them off the field and give them a chance to get healthy. So I'm hopeful. Coach, you, you showed some creativity with Carter Street playing as, at, a little, at a tight end spot and then Tony Johnson playing some fullback. Was that something y'all did to try to get some more – some more room for the running game? We, we, need, we needed to be able to get the running game going. And when you look at North Texas and what we did here uh, with a couple short edges, it made it very difficult for us to be able to hand the ball off and some of the things that they, they were able to do to us. And so we just tried to solidify our edges, put a little bit more beef on the table. And without us having a fullback or a tight end on scholarship or even in the program, it was something that we were looking away to find out how we could solidify an edge and get Kenneth Dixon going, because if you can get Kenneth Dixon going a little bit downhill, uh, he has a tendency to do a little bit of the rest on his own. How did you think Carter Street and Tony Johnson did? I thought they did a nice job. I mean, especially for guys that went over there on a very limited role in a short week, you know, or in a week getting ready, not having the open date to get ready for it. I thought they did a very nice job and gave us the opportunity to at least be able to solidify our edges on some of the short yardage situations. You talked about Coach Perro, um, well, all the coaches having tied, especially Coach Perro on the staff last year, but every time you look at uh, another coach's transcript, each week going into our game, they said we've got to find a way to stop 28. And it keeps getting harder and harder because of what he can do. What, where's the, the balance in him, Coach Payro, knowing exactly what Kenneth brings to the table versus Kenneth just being Kenneth? Well, I think whether you've been with Kenneth or you had the opportunity to watch Kenneth on film, Kenneth is impressive. Uh, he plays the game with a great passion that we've talked about. And so when you look at us where we have had our struggles and our woes, we've played three different quarterbacks. We have not had the efficiency in the passing game that we'd like to. And then you put on the film and you watch Kenneth Dixon, and it's one of the things almost every coach that comes across the field says, uh, wow. That, that guy's a horse, you know, I mean, he, he does a great job. But, you know, a year ago, you've got two NFL receivers and a quarterback that you had the opportunity to keep people balanced because as soon as they load the box, we were able to hurt them down the field. And that's one of the reasons that you have a Pat that's able to do what he's doing and then a Kenneth who was able to do what he did because they complemented each other. And so I think that's one of the things we've really struggled this year where we've given people the ability to be able to do a little bit more of that because of the way that we've struggled in the passing game. And uh, that's what we're taking, we've taken a hard look at a lot of that stuff here in the open date and some of the things that we can do to try and take away, take advantage of people who are trying to play us one-handed. How does uh, Tevin possibly come back to help Kenneth? I mean, just given the added dimension out there with his quickness. Well, and it gives them a, a break and a little bit more speed on the perimeter when you look at um, – that's one of the things that he brings to the table is having the ability to get the ball on the outside and some of his, um, some of his speed. He also adds a boost to kickoff return, you know, which is something that we've gone through now with a couple injuries with our return guys. We've just had a hard time in the punt return and the kickoff return game getting some continuity and some consistency. And hopefully having a Tevin King back he brings you a little bit more of an explosive player in your backfield and on your return teams. Since you sat Ryan out a lot last week, did Scotty get a chance to get some more reps, and how, how's he looking? Both both quarterbacks got quite a bit of work uh, last week with Ryan having the ability to get a little bit more rest, and I, I think, um, I think Scotty has really come back energized. Uh, when you look at it, I think this is it's been very difficult for him to come into the season as a starting quarterback, and then to get an injury, and then to have to sit and watch. And he has waited his turn patiently and waited to get back into this opportunity. And I think he's making the most of it. And I've really been impressed with the week that he had last week. And I thought he came back last night. And even a number of people were commenting. I think he threw the ball and probably did as good of a job as I've seen him do playing quarterback uh, since I've been here. I was really impressed with the week that he had last week. And hopefully we can continue to build on that. And it's just going to continue to provide depth because, as we said, we've got – We've got four games left without an open date, and you get this late in the year, and everybody gets bumps and bruises. Everybody's got it. And you've got to make sure that you have depth. And so I, I think Scotty really did a nice job uh, with the opportunities that he was given last week. When you, not saying that there is a quarterback controversy. Right. Like Ryan Higgins is your quarterback. Right. Should the interceptions keep happening, would you look at maybe Scotty or? You have, you have to. I mean, when you look at it, we're – we're 118th in the country in turnovers. I mean, when you look at not necessarily the margin, but the number of turnovers lost. And whether we're putting the ball on the ground through fumbles or whether we are 
uh, throwing interceptions to the wrong color jersey. I mean, neither one's good. And I have sat up here at this podium and talked and harped about the importance of, of turnovers and how we have to do a better job with it. And regardless of who it is, I think we, we've got to find a way to stop it. This is a Southern Miss team that's created a turnover in every game so far this year. Uh, they're, they're aggressive in what they do, and they've created some turnovers. And we've got to continue to coach it. We've got to continue to make sure that we're doing a, a better job of not putting the ball on the ground or putting it in danger in the passing game. So had, if that were to happen, yes, I feel very comfortable with what I've seen out of Scotty in this week.